Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A logical and a systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSAR net. In the fourth module, aromaticity, benzenoid and non-benzenoid compounds, generations and reactions will be seen. I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as Associate Professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprava MHRD New Delhi. So, in this particular session, what we are going to learn is basically application of aromaticity criteria for various compounds and we will also be studying about the relationship and the ring current and NMR signals. So, let us recall what is the Huckel's rule because most of the problems what we are going to solve are based on the aromaticity principle. So, just we will briefly recall what is the Huckel's rule. The Huckel rule says that a planar cyclic conjugated system with the 4 n plus 2 pi electron is going to be aromatic in ground state. So, let us start with the first problem. Uh, here couple of carbocations are given compound A, compound B and compound C. So, between these three compounds which carbocations are going to be either aromatic or anti aromatic or homo aromatic. So, all those things are given at the bottom in the multiple choices. We have to identify which one belongs to which category. So, we have a cyclo -octa octane system, cyclopentane system, cyclopropane system. So, we have a C 8, C 5 and the C 3 systems are given here and compound A is homo aromatic because there is a carbocation here and compound B is anti aromatic we have a carbocation here and compound C is aromatic we have a carbocation here because the problem relates to carbocation. So, these three is are given as a first answer. In the second one A is aromatic, B is anti aromatic, C is homo aromatic. In the third one A is aro anti aromatic, B is aromatic and C is uh, homo aromatic. So, there are different possibilities are given we are going to find out which one is actually aromatic which is homo aromatic which is anti aromatic all those things we are going to see now. So, what is the rule governing the aromaticity that is what we are going to see compound A when we look at there are 3 pi bonds are there. So, 3 pi bond means total 6 pi electrons are present in this system it is a cyclic system it is conjugated 1, 2, 3, 3 carbons here are actually conjugated and we are also have a sp2 hybridized carbon atom in this one having 6 pi electrons, but there is one sp3 hybridized carbon atom. So, when there is an sp3 hybridized carbon atom that is present, then we cannot say that compound is basically a aromatic compound because all aromatic compound has to have cyclic conjugated and uh, they have to have all same sp2 hybridized carbon atoms, but here we do not have it. So, this compound is uh, having homo aromatic that means one additional uh, sp3 hybridized carbon is present here. So, this is what is called homo aromatic carbon homo aromaticity and in the compound B we have 2 pi electrons are there. So, that means 4 uh, 2 pi bonds are there. So, 4 pi electrons are there and this is a cyclic system it is a conjugated system, but having only 4 pi electrons. So, that means this is not following the 4 n plus 2 pi electrons Huckel's rule. So, this system is basically anti aromatic and when we go to the third one this is a cyclic system we have only 2 pi electrons that is present and we have all the three carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized carbon atom. So, this is following the 4 n plus 2 pi electron rule. So, when n equal to 0 we only have 2 pi electrons. So, this system has 2 pi electrons and this is uh, conjugated this is cyclic and so this compound is basically aromatic in nature. So, whatever uh, A, B and C belong to different category we have actually identified. So, based on that uh, we can find out what is going to be the correct answer. So, in this particular case the choice A is the correct answer because compound A is uh, homo aromatic, B is anti aromatic and C is aromatic. So, that is what we have seen according to Huckel's rule. 
and in the second problem what we are going to find out is the correct order of pKa of the following compounds is a, B, C, three compounds are given, and we have to find out what is the pKa, and four different answers or choices are given here. So let us work out the problem and find it out. What is the correct answer? And uh, to look at uh, pKa, we have to look at the acidity of the compounds basically. So here, compound, uh, the first compound when we look at, the hydrogen has to be lost because then only we are going to find out this is the most acidic hydrogen atom. So, in this particular case this is a hydrogen most acidic hydrogen atom when the acidic hydrogen atom is removed by a base. So, we end up with the carbon ion. So, that is what given here. So, in this system we have two electron from the anionic charge two pi electrons are there. So, total 2 plus 2 4 pi electrons are present in this system. It is a cyclic system it is also a conjugated one. But this is a cyclopropane ring. So, there is a huge angle strain present in this particular compound and because of the negative charge and there is also pi bonds. So, there is a John Teller distortion which because there are two sets of uh, electron rich uh, group uh, are present. So, they repel each other due to which they move from the planarity. So, there is a huge uh, uh, distortion present in this particular compound this happens to avoid the anti aromaticity. So, that is the reason the species basically behaves like a 4 pi allyl system. So, when we look at the allyl system we have a double bond and there is a another 1, 2, 3, 3 carbons are there here also the 3 carbons are there. So, this system behaves as if like it is a 4 pi allyl system very similar to that although this is a cyclic system this tries to behave like a 4 pi allyl system. So, that is the reason this is not going to be anti aromatic, but this will be not planar also. Let us look at the second compound. In the second compound if the hydrogen is removed we are going to get an anion here. So, here there are two electrons are present and we have a 4 pi electrons from 2 pi bonds. So, total 4 plus 2 6 pi electrons are present in this system. So, when we have a 6 pi electrons which is a cyclic conjugated system then we can say it follows the uh, Huckel's rule. So, this is aromatic in nature and when we go to the other compound when the hydrogen atom is removed we get a carbon ion here. So, we have a 2 electron here and we have 3 pi bonds total 6 pi electrons are there. So, 6 pi plus 2 total 8 pi electrons will be there in this particular system and uh, here the sp3 hybridized carbon ion is basically um, the carbon ion is sp3 hybridized. So, the compound is going to be non planar in this particular case and that is the reason this is basically a non aromatic system. So, based on that you can actually say uh, the compound B is uh, aromatic in nature. So, it will be formed very quickly. So, this will have a, uh, a maximum acidity constant. So, uh, this is going to be uh, removed very quickly. So, this is going to have a very uh, low uh, pKa value. So, that is the reason this is given as the uh, least one and uh, the next one is the non aromatic system followed by the anti aromatic system. So, the B will be having the most acidic proton followed by C then followed by A and when we write that uh, pKa, it, pKa is uh, exactly reverse of the acidity of the protons which are seen here. So, we can write A is having the highest number in pKa followed by C followed by B because the B has the most acidic proton when a compound has most acidic proton it can be easily removed. So, the pKa is going to be very low because it is a negative ion pH we know it is a negative ion con hydrogen ion concentration similar to that here also it is the negative value. So, that is the reason it is inversely proportional. If the acidity is higher the pKa numbers are going to be lower if the pKa is uh, higher then the acidity numbers are going to be lower. So, this is inversely proportional. So, that is the reason here we can say Ka and pKa are inversely proportional to each other. So, that we can easily figure it out and the answer is B where uh, A is having the highest pKa followed by C followed by B. And when we move on to the next problem here the correct statement for the following two species here we have a 
dication and we are also having a oxygen uh, present uh, cyclic system. So, both A and B are aromatic. So, that is first statement. The second one A is aromatic, but B is anti aromatic. The third statement is A is non aromatic and B is anti aromatic and the fourth statement is A is aromatic and B is home aromatics. So, based on the Huckel's rule we are going to find out whether uh, which uh, statement is the correct statement. So, here A is a cyclic system and these are also 3 pi bonds are there and these 2 carbon atoms are also sp2 hybridized. So, that means we have a complete set of all the carbon atoms which are sp2 hybridized. So, conjugation is actually present and it is a cyclic system and this is also having only 3 pi bonds uh, that means total 6 pi electrons are there. So, this system is aromatic in nature. So, that is perfectly fine. So, what about the second one? So, when we look at the B, this is a cyclic system that is perfectly fine but oxygen has 2 lone pair of electrons, but only 1 is participating in the pi uh, ring formation. So, we have already 3 pi bonds are there which is equivalent to 6 pi electrons and we have 2 pi ele uh, two electrons uh, from the oxygen atom. So, total 8 pi electrons will be there. So, that means this system is anti aromatic. So, accordingly the B is the correct statement compound A is aromatic and B is anti aromatic. And when we move on to the next problem, so here among the following compounds the compound which has the lowest energy barrier for cis trans isomerization is. So, we have compound A, compound B, compound C and compound D, 4 different compounds are given and we have to find out what is having the lowest barrier for rotation. So, in other words what is lowest barrier for rotation? There is a small cue, clue they had given. In all the systems if you look at there is a double bond connecting two cyclic systems. So, lowest energy barrier means instead of the double bond there should be a single bond that should exist. If a single bond exists in any of the resonance structures then we can say that compound will be the correct answer that will be having the lowest barrier for cis trans isomerization. So, let us draw the polarized structures for all the compounds. Uh, if you look at the structure A, we have a C3 and we have a C7 system. So, from the Huckel's rule, what we have seen that is C3 systems with uh, cation and the C7 system with cations both are aromatic in nature because in the C3 system with one pi bond, we only have two pi electrons. And in the C7 system, we have 3 double uh, three double bonds or 3 pi bonds are there which is equivalent to 6 pi electrons. So, both 2 pi electrons and 6 pi electrons are aromatic in nature. So, in other words, the carbocations of C3 and C7 are going to be aromatic in nature. But when we shift to the central double bond, any one of the ring only can get the positive charge, other ring is going to get the negative charge because we are going to shift one of the bond to any one of the ring. Okay. So, if we are moving the pi bond towards the C3 ring, that means the electron uh, is going to be more in this particular system. So, this is going to form an anion and that C3 anion is going to be highly unstable. So, this kind of shift cannot happen or may not happen. What is the second structure? So, in the second structure we know the C5 system is really good for the anion because C5 anion has 6 pi electrons because in the C5 systems we have a 2 pi bonds. So, there are 4, tel, two, four pi electrons are there and when there is an anion we also have 2 more electrons. So, that means total 6 pi electrons are there. So, the C phi anion is also going to be aromatic in nature, but we have 2 systems. So, if one of the ring gets the negative charge, so that will become aromatic, but the other one will become a positive charge. So, C phi carbocations are quite unstable. So, that means this also is not the right choice because here also one ring is fine with the negative charge C5 system, but the other C5 system cannot have the positive charge and be aromatic. So, that is the reason this also may not happen. And let us move on to the second, third one. So, in the third one, we have a C5 system, we have a C7 system. Now, there is a permutation combination we can do. The C5 anion is basically aromatic in nature, 
C 7 cation is also aromatic in nature. So, in other words, if the bond is shifted, the negative uh, the double bond is shifted towards the C 5 group, C 5 system, then we get the anion here. So, this becomes aromatic and uh, if you look at the C 7 that is going to lose that uh, bonds uh, electron. So, that means this will become cation again C 7 cation is also aromatic in nature. So, that means that possibility is ok, because both the systems will become aromatic in nature, but we can also do the other way around. If the bond, if the electrons are shifted towards the other way like uh, if the double bond shifts towards the C 7 system that is going to be anti aromatic in nature, because already we have 6 electrons, 6 pi electrons are there, 2 more electrons makes it 8 pi electrons that is quite unstable and in the other system we only will have 4 electrons, 4 pi electrons. So, that is also going to be unstable. So, that means the bond, the central bonded electron can only shift towards one direction, but not in the both directions. So, here is the way how it can actually be shifted. So, if the double bond shift towards the C 5 ring, so the C 5 anion is aromatic in nature and the C 7 cation is aromatic in nature. So, this is possible in other words we can have a single bond. In other words what is the answer we are looking for is exactly here. So, this particular case the single uh, the double bond can actually exist as a single bond. So, that the cis-trans isomerization is possible in this particular case. And if you go to the second uh, the last one, so we have a C 7 system another C 7 system. So, we exactly know both the C 7 system cannot have a plus charge, because only C 7 cation is uh, stable aromatic in nature. So, this is also ruled out. So, in other words A, B and D are ruled out and C is the only correct answer for this particular uh, problem. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are going to see a compound uh, there is a compound given here and this compound is aromatic in nature and it is having high dipole moment. So, this is one statement. The second one is this compound is aromatic, but it has no dipole moment. So, that is the second one. The third one is the compound is non aromatic and has a high dipole moment and the last one is the compound is anti aromatic and di it has no dipole moment. So, there are 4 statements given and we have to find out what is the right statement for this particular compound. So, here again we can draw the polarized structures like the previous case we can draw the polarized structure. So, here uh, one of the double bond is shifted towards the middle and uh, one uh, double bond from the ring is uh, point uh, taken to one of the carbon atoms. So, we end up with a carbanion and a carbocation. So, we have already seen in the previous case there was a double bond connecting the two rings in this particular case the both rings are fused together. So, that is the only difference. So, one can have a C 7 system with a positive charge another one is C 5 with a negative charge. So, in other words we can say this compound is aromatic in nature and has a high dipole moment. So, that is how the correct answer for this uh, problem is the compound is aromatic in nature, because uh, we know uh, by shifting one of the bond we can have both the systems both the aromatic uh, both the rings become uh, aromatic in nature and because of a charge separation plus and minus it is going to have a high dipole moment. And the next problem is in this particular case which of the compound is anti aromatic in nature. So, we are going to find out the solution for that. Let us first before uh, solving this problem let us look at uh, how many electrons are basically present there based on that we can actually move to the next one. So, we have 4 pi electrons present in compound first and uh, 2, 2, 2 total 6 pi electrons are present in compound B and we also have 6 pi electrons present in compound C. There is a sp 3 hybridized carbon atom and we have 2 pi electrons in this system. So, these are all the total number of pi electrons present in all the 4 different compounds. So, this compound A is uh, basically the S boron is basically S p 2 hybridized and uh, then we say this is a cyclic uh, conjugated system with uh, 4 pi electrons only. So, when we have a 4 pi electron system that is anti aromatic in nature. So, this compound is anti aromatic. So, that is fine. So, what about the rest of the compounds? The compound B is having 6 pi electrons. So, this is a cyclic system and this is also having conjugated system. So, we have 6 pi electrons cyclic system and this is a aromatic in nature. And if you go to the 
third one we have uh, 6 pi electrons, but there is a sp3 hybridized carbon atom. So, that means this compound is not planar and uh, this is also not aromatic. So, this compound is not at all aromatic because of the presence of the sp3 hybridized carbon atom. And when we go to the last one, we have 2 pi electrons in the cyclic system. So, this belongs to the aromatic category. So, this compound is aromatic in nature. So, the anti aromatic compound is basically the compound A in this particular case. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, here what we are going to see is uh, there are uh, a particular uh, chemical reaction given here and we are going to find out what is the product formed in this particular reaction. So, there are two bromine atoms present and we also have a zinc as a reagent in this particular case. So, the product formed is either aromatic or anti aromatic, homo aromatic or non aromatic. So, this is what we are going to see in this particular case. So, in the problem what is given is there is a C 3 system, there is a C 5 system. Uh, now, we are not going to look out uh, how many double bonds are present and other thing, we are only going to look at whether it is a which uh, uh, cyclic system whether C 3, C 4, C 5, C 6 which cyclic system it belongs based on that we are going to work out uh, what is going to be the answer. So, the product is when we have a zinc we already know this uh, reaction first the bromine reacts with the zinc to form the Z and Br bond and then uh, this Z and Br bond is broken and uh, the bromine is uh, lost as a leaving group there is a shift of double bonds happening as shown here and we end up with the two double bonds. We started off with one double bond and we ended up with the two double bonds and there is a double bond which is connecting these two rings. And we have a earlier seen that if there is a shift of bond from the central double bond, one of the system may become aromatic or may become anti aromatic. So, in this particular case we know this is a C5 system with uh, two pi bonds are already present. So, total four pi electrons are there. If the double bond shift towards this C5 ring, then we have total 6 pi electrons that is present in this system. So, this becomes aromatic in nature and when we look at the second one, this is a carbocation, there are 2 pi electrons are there, the entire system is a uh, sp2 hybridized system and 2 pi electrons with uh, 3 carbons here, it is also aromatic in nature. So, both the rings are going to be aromatic. So, in other words the product that will be formed in this particular reaction is going to be aromatic in nature. So, let us look at the next problem. So, here there are various reactions are given. There are two reactions that are happening. The first one is a diacetization reaction that is sodium nitride in the presence of HCl is treated with an amino compound. So, this is nothing but a diacetyl reaction and uh, after the diacetization is over a mild base is used that leads to the product B. This is the first step and the product B is treated with a diene to give a product Q. So, there are two different products that are formed P and Q are formed in this particular case and we are going to find it out what is P and what is Q. So, there are four types of uh, answers given here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 choices are given. In the first choice we have a benzene type of product, a carboxylic acid that will be formed in the first step followed by the deals all the type reaction in the second case leading to the bicyclic systems that is compound uh, number 1 and in the second one there is no carboxylic acid group present and uh, which is very similar to product 1 only, but the only difference is the carboxylic acid group is missing in P and Q. And in the third one we are actually having the diacetized product only as the intermediate or uh, the first stage product as P and this undergoes diels alder reaction to give the say uh, an isomerized product similar to the first one uh, in the product Q in the first step. So, here the position of the carboxylic group and the methyl groups are different. So, these are basically positional isomers. So, these are the two different product that will be formed and in the four also we have entirely a different product that can be formed. So, these are all the four different choices given and we are going to look at how the reaction actually proceeds. 
So, in the first case what we are doing is we are going to do a diacetization reaction. So, here is the diazonium salt that will be formed and we have a carboxylic acid that is present here and when we have a carboxylic acid that is present here and we are going to use a base. So, that is the important thing we have to look here because in the equation it is not just the diazonium, uh, diazonium salt that is formed. We are also going to use a base in this particular case. So, the base abstract the most acidic proton in this particular case. So, the carboxylic hy uh, hydrogen uh, is the most acidic one that is removed and when the base removes that uh, hydrogen the oxygen gets the negative charge and this leads to the loss of carbon dioxide molecules very readily. So, this is the very very crucial thing that is happening because of the loss of carbon dioxide molecule we end up with the basically the benzene type compound and the carboxylic acid unit is completely gone in the product. So, this is the important thing we have to remember. So, this leads to the benzene type uh, compound this benzene type compound is quite unstable. So, this undergoes a Diels-Alder reaction with the diene that is given here and that leads to the cyclized bicyclic product as shown here. So, in the final product we do not have the carboxylic acid unit. So, based on that we can actually say what is our starting material and what is going to be our product that we can say. So, in this particular case the P is our uh, first intermediate which is nothing but the benzene and Q is the Diels-Alder product of uh, the reaction between the diene and the benzene. So, these two are uh, the compound P and Q are given only in the uh, second choice. So, the answer to this problem is 2. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, in this particular case uh, we are going to find out uh, what is the product that will be formed and the what is the mechanism that will be involved. So, we have a heterocyclic compound that is given here this undergoes a reaction with uh, a base a strong base sodium methoxide is a strong base that is used and uh, what is the reaction that is proceeding uh, like uh, the intermediate the mechanism for this reaction whether it is a addition elimination mechanism or benzene mechanism. So, we have two benzene mechanism what we have seen earlier and uh, we also have a SN2 type reaction. So, these are all the mechanism by which how the reaction proceeds and it is basically the removal or the substitution nucleophilic substitution of the chlorine group by the OET group. So, that is the only thing in this particular reaction that is happening. So, one of the uh, in this particular case the chlorine is replaced by OET group. So, if you look at the first and the second uh, choices the only difference is the mechanism is the only thing that is different, but we are getting the same product and in the third and fourth one. In the fourth one also we get the same product, but only the mechanism is different and the third one we have two ethoxy group that is present. Obviously, we can say uh, it is very difficult uh, for uh, introduction of the second uh, ethoxy group into the system. So, this is uh, completely uh, out of the sink product in this particular case. So, the product is same 1, 2 and 4 will are having the same product, but only the mechanism is little bit different. So, we are going to see what is the actual mechanism by which this reaction actually proceeds. So, the solution to this problem is actually given this is nothing but the aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction because we have a good very good leaving group and we also have a very strong uh, uh, base. So, when a very strong base is used and a very good uh, leaving group is present. So, the reaction is nothing but the aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, the major difference here is the presence of the nitrogen atom. So, whenever an aromatic nucleophilic substitution is carried out if there is an electron withdrawing group that is present or there is an electronegative atom that is present then the ortho because these groups has to be present in the either in the ortho or the para position if it is present then it actually favors the addition elimination reaction. So, that means, because the electron withdrawing group pulls the electron density towards itself. So, that is the reason the nucleophile can actually attack the system otherwise what will happen is nucleophile is negative charge and we also have a electron rich aromatic system. So, both will repel each other. So, the reaction may not proceed here, but when we have a hetero atom or when we have electron withdrawing group that is present. So, what it will do is it will pull the electron towards itself making this carbon little bit uh, electron deficient. 
So, when it is electron deficient, the nucleophile can easily attack here. So, that is the addition happens first, the nucleophilic addition happens first followed by the loss of the leaving group. So, that is how the reaction may easily proceed when there is a electron withdrawing group that is present or an electronegative atom that is present in the ortho or para position. So, in this particular case we have a nitrogen atom that is present. So, this reaction does not proceed by a, a benzene mechanism or by SN2 mechanism, but it proceeds only by the addition elimination mechanism. So, this is nothing but a simple aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, the first one is our answer to the question.